sweet gum between my hamburger buns. I wonder what Nintendo's up to today. Oh, they took down another fan project? Okay. Pokemon Go is losing players? Okay. <gasps> another next rumor that holds no ground whatsoever because Nintendo fails to give the average consumer anything to help generate basic interest and excitement towards the future to company and the next generation of gaming as a whole? Gee! Do I take forever to make videos? You bet your ass I do! Let's get started! How much do we take for granted in our time here living? Do we live life to the fullest? Are we perhaps too focused on the little things when we should be looking at the dangers up ahead? Is it too soon to pronounce that the Nintendo NX is doomed and that by extension Nintendo might be kicking the bucket in the next 5 years as a giant in the video game industry? Well, one thing is evident when discussing Nintendo. Games are being released to lackluster reception by longtime fans and the dedicated alike. Fan projects of neglected IPs are being taken down due to the protective archaic nature of the company in question. We have no details on the NX as of this video, and it seems like the Wii U is effectively dead in terms of content. So what's the point of this video? Well, I guess I just want to talk about Nintendo. Are they falling under? Are the fans taking these new projects too seriously due to self-entitlement? Is Nintendo in the right for taking down fan games of their properties to protect their precious namesakes? Well, let's just dive into things and try to make sense of a company that has always dared to deviate from the norm of video gaming. First and foremost, let it be known that I've been a loyal consumer to Nintendo brands since the GameCube. I would count all the way back to the days of the Game Boy and Super Nintendo, but I was a Sonic kid growing up. While I owned an SNES and Game Boy alongside my Genesis, my time was usually dedicated to the Genesis. As the years went on, I slowly became a loyal consumer to Nintendo brand thanks to titles like Super Mario Galaxy, Animal Crossing, and the Super Smash Bros. series, alongside the countless Sonic titles released throughout the years. Lately, Nintendo seems to be more about new ideas and gimmicks rather than making good titles that feel like a natural progression of any of their intellectual properties or IPs for short. Due to the financial losses from the Wii U and the recent batch of titles released across Nintendo's home and handheld consoles, failing to leave a lasting impression on up-and-coming consumers and longtime veterans of the diverse lineup of IPs Nintendo's created over the past 30 years, people claim that Nintendo is becoming a dying brand, or at least a former shadow of itself. For every Super Mario Maker or Splatoon, there's an Amiibo Festival or Federation for us to share the spotlight. It feels like the ratio of good to bad games has been steadily increasing over the past few years, and in the case of the Super Mario series, with the noticeable exceptions of one or two IPs, it feels like everything is becoming less complex and more simplistic with every title. But let's not get ahead of ourselves here. Nintendo as a company has been doing whatever it wants since the NES. So why is there a sudden movement to petition every single game that doesn't sit well with the elitist or the vocal minority of a community? Well, through my eyes, Nintendo seems to be slowly generalizing their franchises to fit a niche, a trope, a cliche. Super Mario is no- God damn it. Paper Mario is no longer about an R, but God for Paper Mario is no longer about an RPG with a cuff. <laughs> <laughs> Paper Mario is no longer about an RPG with a compelling story, interesting characters, an intimidating villain, and character development. It's Mario with paper gimmicks and a plot as basic as the main Mario games. On the other hand, we have yet to see a proper continuation to the Metroid series, or at least a title that improves what made Other M's gameplay work, while fixing a story that originally limited the player's progression by means of insulting the integrity of a once beloved character and turning her into someone so driven by emotion that her vocal performance is as stale as Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival, a title that sounds innovative and great on paper, you know, it's an Animal Crossing party game for crying out loud, but is essentially the Wii U equivalent to a board game with little to no activity from the player. I mean, for Christ's sakes, guys, why didn't you make the Mario Party equivalent to Animal Crossing? But no! Insert your amiibo here on the gamepad, and then you play the game. What's the objective? Make everybody happy! But no! $60 down the drain! Um, where were we? Oh, right, fan entitlement. Yeah, yeah, let, let, let's, let's get on with that. Okay, so, due to the recent onslaught of titles experimenting with beloved IPs, fans have been 50-50 on their commitment with Nintendo. No franchise is guaranteed a success with every title. That much is certain. However, I think the problem with Nintendo is that they raised the bar so phenomenally high that in recent years, the failure to raise the bar even further has resulted in games that, despite entertaining the mass majority of casual gamers, have failed to entice the seasoned veterans of the community. Due to this, many of the titles being released 
least hold no weight and are just fragments of the past, only to be brought up with discussing the future of a franchise. Keep a close eye on Metroid Fre Mr. Fre Fred, Fred, Metroid Fred. Keep a close eye on Metroid Fred. Keep a close eye on Metroid Prime Federation Force as it slowly goes into that dark corner of games that fail to progress ideas and gameplay dynamics that had so much potential yet failed to capture even an iota of that untapped reservoir. Games like Yoshi's New Island, Amiibo Festival, Mario Tennis Ultra Smash, Triforce Heroes, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, New Super Mario Brothers 2, Star Fox Zero, Chibi Robo Ziplash, and countless other. To make matters worse, Nintendo or at least someone on their legal team seems to really hate fan projects that actually help the natural progression of these fallen IPs, thus punishing the dedicated few to even pursuing careers with Nintendo due to their overprotective nature. Now I'm going to say that Nintendo has the right to take down anything that they feel is slander to their namesake, but herein lies the problem. Nintendo's like that one friend that had a relationship that was so toxic that they effectively treat every single future partner as a monster bound to repeat the same mistakes from their past when really no one person is the same and your experiences will vary with each person. In the 80s and 90s, Nintendo whored out the Mario and Zelda franchises like there was no tomorrow. Now, while The Legend of Zelda had one bad TV show and three awful CDI titles, it was Mario that took a hard blow. Okay, so in editing this video, there was just too much to work with. I have too many videos on Mario now and it is just insane. I'm gonna go ahead and just scroll down the list. There's too many of them, but I know that you guys want visual examples and all that, so uh, I present to you a clip from Mario Teaches Typing 2 for PC. Okay, one. Mario just pulled a typewriter out of his crotch. Like, I mean, women, expect more out of your man. Don't ask them to pull out your dick. Pull out a fucking typewriter and just write it, write your essay for your midterm or something. Two, what's with the hills? Why were the hills just looking up and just like, Oh, is that a typewriter up in the sky? That's something I've never seen. I, I wasn't expecting to see that today. Like, damn. Also, why did the castle have eyes and a mouth? You talk Mario and you think about something like, oh, Mario saves the princess from a giant turtle dragon. I didn't sign up for this. You think, you think Nintendo's bad now? Look at Nintendo in the 90s. And this whole video just falls under like, good lord. Perspective's been changed. Oh my fucking god. Due to the mistakes of allowing anyone to fool around with the Mario license with either no understanding or passion of the source material in the 90s, Nintendo is so protective of their IPs nowadays that any fan project related to them is shut down within weeks of gaining viral status. Another Metroid 2 remake, Pokemon Uranium, Super Mario 64 HD, Majora's Mask HD, Project M, the list goes on. I get why Nintendo does this, they're in the right to do so as a business, but this isn't gonna fix the fact that the Wii U isn't fair and well with consumers, and that no one even knows that you're even making another console. With that said, consider the following. As of May 2016, Nintendo's current market worth is $21.7 billion. They can declare bankruptcy 25 times and still be around. They aren't going anywhere. However, I personally think as a company with years of games down their gullet, non Profit van creations or mods of pre existing titles isn't going to hurt the reputation of the games produced in house at Nintendo. In fact, by making attempts to bring these projects down, you're sending a message to other companies of how you feel about your community that supports and blindly loves you no matter what choices you make. In this instance, I think you should take a look at what Sega is doing with the Sonic franchise. The Sonic fan game community is massive, filled to the brim of ROM hacks, fan games, and mods to several titles in the series. Sega doesn't attempt to take down the top dogs in the Sonic fan game community. They do something else. They hire them. Christian Whitehead, Head Cannon, aka Simon Thomley, Penoga West Games, 
they started out making fan games of their own, ROM hacks that built on the originals like Sonic Mega Mix, and HD remix of classic titles. Whitehead was tasked with the duty of remaking Sonic CD and later on with the help of Thomley, Sonic 1 and 2. These are often considered the best versions of these titles, bar none. And now we have Sonic Mania, an original official title produced by Sonic fans for Sonic fans under the love and support of Sega. For those who say this game's gonna fail, look at games like Retro Sonic, Sonic XG, Sonic Mega Mix, and the demo for the unfinished Sonic 2 HD, which were all games produced by the folks working on Sonic Mania. Nintendo is more than likely never going to pick up this concept, but if you want to better your reputation with your community and the people who are devoted to defending you no matter what you do, you need to learn better communication with your fans and be more open to fan projects of your IPs. Furthermore, if the NX is to be considered the next progression in Nintendo's console innovation, it needs good titles. It needs games that people have been asking about for years now. However, don't use a nostalgia card. Just don't give us an HD remake or a throwback game. Give us something that continues the progression of your IP as a whole. Metroid needs a proper continuation from Other M. Keep the gameplay and stick to giving us a story that builds the world, but doesn't halt the progression of the game or creates a stupid excuse why Samus can't use weapons already equipped in her arsenal. Give us a Mario game that evolves the concepts introduced in Galaxy, but finds a way to cross-implement it with 64 and 3D World. Giving us an immersive experience that combines the exploration of 64, the open-ended traversing of platforms platforms from any angle akin to Galaxy, and the slick, vibrant polish and presentation that 3D World gave us. New worlds, ideas, level themes, don't just give us the same grass, desert, ice, sky, lava, and final world thematic, it's worn out, it's welcome. Just don't give us a Mario title that feels like a retread of pre-established concepts with no real evolution of the franchise. Oh look, I'm doing it! I I'm doing the fine entitlement thingy! I'm asking for something from a company that failed to meet my expectations because of my selfish needs. Uh oh, back to the lab again. Oh no, back to the lab again. We gotta go back. In the near future, after this video comes out, Nintendo will more than likely drop several massive bombshells on the NX and the future of the company. Everyone will suddenly forget the bad things that Nintendo does, and will blindly praise them like gods. A never-ending cycle of pessimism and accolades. So, is this really about Nintendo versus the world, or is this really about how the world is blind to the mistakes Nintendo makes on a daily basis because they make good games. I think it's a little bit of both. Lately, due to the imbalance of good to bad slash mediocre titles from Nintendo's lineup, people are beginning to see the cracks at the seams of Nintendo's business decisions. People don't know what they want, and sales certainly prove a point when seeing what is financially successful, not critically successful. The thing is that in 2016, Nintendo really doesn't have a knockout title of the year. They found success in the mobile market, but due to the lack of communication, even that's dying down significantly. What's different now compared to 2014 and 2015, where Nintendo was seeing a massive boom in interest thanks to turning games like Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U and 3DS, Split 2, Hyrule Warriors, Mario Kart 8, and Super Mario Maker into giant platforms that hosted multiple updates filled with DLC, free content, new stages, weapons, costumes, etc.? Well, I think this comes down to raising the bar so high again. Due to the landslide of content flowing out of all these games finally wrapping up, there's nothing else to really spread for 2016. This is simply the calm before the storm, also known as the NX. Nintendo's releasing a batch of new but unnecessary titles now so that when more information about the NX is revealed, we, you don't have to worry about dealing with anything to blemish the news. So, what should be taken from all this? Well, Nintendo needs to calm down about fan projects. They're not gonna sell your reputation unless it's designed for profit. Also, the community needs to calm the hell down about newer projects not meeting expectations. If you have a problem with it, make your own fan game and prove a point to Nintendo. Lastly, even if the NX fails, Nintendo will find a way to recover. The Wii U was an entire failure thanks to titles like Smash 4 and Super Mario Maker. Was it a success? Uh, kinda. At the end of the day, Nintendo needs to realize that fan involvement and fan projects are a welcome mat to new developers and gamers alike. Listen to what the fans have to say. Sometimes their voice can lead you to a step in the right direction. For now, Nintendo's failures and mistakes should serve as a reminder that no one company is destined to always be successful every year. You'll have years where nothing good comes out, but in my opinion, this is where Nintendo flourishes. You see, for every bad idea, there's a great one waiting to be discovered. For every Federation Force, there's a Splatoon. For every Chibi Robo, there's a Super Mario Maker. For every Amiibo Festival, there is a Mini Mario & Friends Amiibo Challenge. For everything that Nintendo stands for, there will be that shining star that breaks the mold and changes the dynamic and helps improve the company as a whole. Nintendo will still be standing when all other companies perish because of games that not only change the way we see gaming, but how we see ourselves as 
gamers. What may seem childish now might just be someone's gateway into the gaming industry. And for that, I hope that one day, Nintendo allows fans to make official games from their IPs that continue the legacy and inspire new generations to be the very best that they can be. Until then, we can only hope for the very best. On my business card, I am a corporate president. In my mind, I am a game developer. But in my heart, I am a gamer. I'm Priestonic, stay strong, live life, and know that someone out there loves you for you. I'll talk to you later. Take care.